Hey there, and thanks for watching Getting Started with WordPress. In this lesson, we'll learn about WordPress's image gallery feature. Use this video as a guide and follow along on your own WordPress site. If you don't have a WordPress site yet, visit this link to find out how we will create one for you absolutely free. WordPress has got a basic but useful image gallery feature built in. Here's an example of a WordPress image gallery. The gallery displays a set of thumbnails. If we click the thumbnail, it will bring us to the attachment page where we have the file name, a caption, and a description. On this page, visitors can even comment on the image. So how do we achieve this? Let's have a look at how to create an image gallery in WordPress. Image galleries are actually posts, so let's create a new one. Next, we'll click the Add Image button. Now, instead of uploading a single image, this time I click and drag my mouse to select multiple images. WordPress is now uploading and crunching all of the images. This crunching is actually the process of resizing the images into thumbnails, medium, and large sizes. If you notice, some of these images automatically have titles. That's because WordPress is able to read the EXIF data that has been embedded in the image. After WordPress is done, I click Save All Changes. This will bring us to the Gallery tab. Click on Show to reveal the image options. Now we can add some titles, captions, and descriptions. We can even drag and drop to reorder the images in our gallery. Don't forget to save all changes when you're done. Here's the important part, the gallery settings. To give each image its own page where visitors can leave comments, make sure to link thumbnails to the attachment page. Next, we can choose to order the images by date or by file name. Finally, choose the number of columns for the images to appear in. 3 is a good default. And then click the Insert Gallery button. WordPress will put a placeholder in our content like this. Publish the post to see how the image gallery looks like. And here's the result, an image gallery three columns wide. Here's the image that we added a caption to earlier. If we click on it, we'll see the full image with its title, caption, and description. Some WordPress teams provide support for post formats. Post formats can transform the way your content is displayed. We won't cover this in detail because not all teams have post formats but I'll quickly touch on the gallery post format. Here I'm editing the travel photo gallery from earlier. If we simply change the post format from standard to gallery, we see that our gallery earlier is now displayed differently. Here's how it compares to a standard post. Posts with the gallery format only appear differently on the home page. It still looks the same when you click through to the post. Using post formats is entirely up to you, but I think they add a nice touch if they're available on your team. We'll learn about WordPress teams in an upcoming lesson. Finally, let's have a quick look at the settings that affect images and galleries. First, let's go to the Media Library page. This is where we can find all of the images that have been uploaded previously. You can edit images by clicking on their names, and you can also upload images directly from this page. Next, let's go to the Settings Media page. This is where we can find the settings for images that are managed by WordPress. By default, WordPress resizes all images that are uploaded to the media library to these three sizes. If you need to, you can change the sizes here. 
And that's it for this lesson. In the next one, we'll learn about using other types of media with WordPress. We provide additional content and a support forum to registered members of click2launch.net. Sign up for a free membership by visiting this link. <laughs>